We've learned a lot about dual antiplatelet therapy in the course of the last year, year and a half. We've had a variety of trials, a variety of different agents, inconsistent results. That doesn't really help. So what I'd like to do today is we are at CRT, and one of the papers being presented here is being presented by Dr. Zahair Fanari, who is an MD and who is a, uh, an interventional fellow in the cardiology division in the University of Kansas. And we're talking long-term use of dual antiplatelet therapy for the secondary prevention of atherothrombotic events, and this is a large meta-analysis. Yes. Why did you do the trial first off? So uh, the main re there's a lot of questions about what is the right uh, duration of dual antiplatelets, and like we're going all the way from three months to two years now with different trials. So I think many many of uh, previous meta-analysis answered the question about safety of doing shorter uh, duration of uh, dual antiplatelets, but there's a lot of questions about what is the benefit of longer duration of dual antiplatelets in secondary prevention of uh, atherosclerosis, uh, atherothrombotic uh, events. So we got a lot of trials, as you mentioned, the last uh, uh, two years with different results. We had Charisma many, many years ago. We suggested a trend, but it was not conclusive, and then we got sh smaller trials showing no benefit, and then we got the DAPT and Pegasus uh, Timmy uh, trials, which showed uh, some benefit of longer duration of dual antiplatelets but also that comes at an expense. So I wanted really to combine all these trials to see what's the impact of having longer duration of dual antiplatelets and which patient population will benefit the most from that. So that's why we did that. So it was like a total of six studies and about 48,000 patients? Yes, a total of 48,000 patients, uh, around uh, almost 21,000 patients with longer dur uh, duration of dual antiplatelets versus uh, 27,000 patients with uh, longer duration only of aspirin. And we compared, uh, compared both, both groups, and um, um, it showed actually that uh, longer duration uh, was associated with dec decrease in the composite of this MI and stroke, mainly uh, on the expense of MI. And uh, however, that came on the expense of increased risk of bleeding. Right. And we also looked at subgroup, and mainly it looks like uh, the patients who will benefit the most are the patients who had uh, prior MI or who, the ones who presented with acute coronary syndrome, whereas the ones who got drug eluting stents uh, with no prior MI or, or just for stable angina and symptoms, they, these guys didn't really benefit much from uh, prolonged dual antiplatelets. They just got the burden of uh, severe bleeding. So it's a careful balance of risk for every patient is what you're saying. Yes, for sure. In terms of what your take home message is from this, what did you learn from it? I think it will change in the future. I think we will have to individualize uh, our decision for antiplatelets depending on each case. So for, um, I think for, dual anti uh, for drug eluting stents who are placed without a MI, especially with the new generation stents and new generation uh, technology, I think uh, it might be fine for, to use it for three months. However, patients who are at higher risk, patients who had prior MI, we still need to know more about diabetic patients as well. Uh, these patients who are at higher risk, I think we should consider uh, doing uh, longer duration of dual antiplatelets as long as there's no bleeding. Yeah, we even did a cover story. Uh, I think we called it dissing DAT because for a while there, before the DAT trial, it yes. was you know three months to forever. Right. That's a big window of opportunity there, and I'm really glad that, that you had a chance to do this paper, because I think it's really interesting. Yes. And we would like to remind everybody, please, that uh, the abstracts for the CRT meeting are in Jack Hardy Vascular Interventions. Please look at the February 22nd issue. There is a supplement with the abstracts. For CardioSource World News and CardioSource World News Interventions, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.